Beatles' first single was released in the UK on 5 October 1962. It peaked at number 17 in the charts. Even though it wasn't a massive hit upon release, the arrival of the Beatles on the scene marked the beginning of a new era. Certainly, many of the bands and artists who were popular in late 1962 would soon struggle to find success after the Beatles and the British Invasion bands started to dominate the charts. But how did the British press react to the Beatles' first single? Record Mirror reviewed the single a week after it was released. The magazine wrote, Harmonica again, starts off Love Me Do. And then this strangely monica group gets at the lyrics. Fairly restrained in their approach, they indulge in some offbeat combinations of vocal chords. Though there's plenty happening, it tends to drag about midway, especially when the harmonica takes over for a spell. It's not a bad song though. The flip side features a fairly straightforward group handling of a poorish arrangement. The song stands up well enough, but things don't happen frequently enough to make us interested. A week later, the New Musical Express published a small article about the Beatles. Journalist Alan Smith wrote, Making their NME chart debut this week are the Beatles, a vocal instrumental group who hail from Liverpool, the birthplace of stars such as Billy Fury, Frankie Vaughan, and Ken Dodd. Their own composition Love Me Do is their first disc to be released on a British label. They were previously with Polydor and had several discs released on the continent, including one with singer Tony Sheridan. Why are they called the Beatles? The boys laughingly put off this question by saying that it came to them in a vision. During their brief but eventful career, the Beatles have become firm favourites at the Star Club in Hamburg. And they've appeared at shows in Britain with Little Richard, Bruce Channel, Gene Vincent and Joe Brown. Joe is among their stoutest admirers. The magazine also reported, The Beatles will join Little Richard's concert bill at Liverpool Empire on Sunday. This is a major booking for them, at their own hometown. On November 1st, the Beatles will fly to Germany for 14 days at the Star Club in Hamburg. Disc magazine spoke to the Beatles after they returned from Germany. Journalist Jean Carroll wrote, The Beatles, the newest British group to join the ever-growing list of outfits to challenge the shadows, dropped into the disc office just about 12 hours after their return from the third trip to Germany. Spokesman John Lennon said, We're very tired. People say show business is all fun and no work, but they should try it for a bit. They would soon change their minds. Lennon continued, Usually we get a great reception at the Star Club, and this time they put the red carpet out for us because our record was beginning to hit the charts. The Beatles were also asked about their sound. George Harrison said, Our sound? Sure, that's typical of a hundred groups from our area. We were lucky, we got away with it first. Harrison was also asked about their next release. George said, Our next disc may be a remake of the demo we first cut at Parlophone. It's called Please Please Me. But our manager Brian Epstein is not too keen on the title, so we may change it. Paul McCartney said, they say that Ray Charles can record a number in one take. Hours start at about 7 a.m. and don't finish till a whole day later. That same week, Record Mirror also spoke to the Beatles. Paul McCartney said, When we played outside Liverpool, we would hire a couple of coaches and take an audience with us. On many dates outside the Liverpool area, we had to work hard to please the audience. Sometimes we couldn't do it. We either went down a treat or very badly. The Record Mirror journalist wrote, it's only now that the Beatles are being accepted outside the Liverpool area. Their first single, which is still in the charts, has got a lot to do with this. But a lot of people don't like it. Paul McCartney said, a lot of people still don't like our music. When we're performing, we try to please the audience generally. If we find that slow numbers aren't working, we'll switch to fast ones. And if they don't work, we might try something more offbeat, like Twist and Shout by the Isley Brothers. Those are the sort of things we like doing best, the rhythm and blues things. Journalist Norman Jopling continued, The Beatles themselves are a very offbeat team. They don't wear pointed shoes or have layers of grease on their hair. Chelsea boots, suede coats, and long flat hairstyles are more their mark. Their next record will be recorded very soon. Paul didn't know the titles but he guessed that the favorite was a number called Please Please Me. It's a more catchy number than Love Me Do, which incidentally was first performed by the boys in the Buddy Holly style. That same month, Disc Magazine published an article which seemed to predict the beginning of a new era in music. Journalist June Harris wrote, 
After seven years in the States working for RCA and London Records, 29-year-old British-born Mike Collier has come home, giving it all up because according to him, the potential here is fantastic while in America the singles market is getting worse and worse. Mike said, I used to look at the British charts every week, and a month ago I decided to come back. There's a terrific market here, and our own artists are doing fantastically well with sales. But during the past year in the States, only two American artists have been awarded legitimate golden discs. Such is the fall in the singles market. A few months later, on January 5, 1963, Disc Magazine announced the imminent release of the Beatles' second single. A reader called David Smith sent a letter to the magazine. The reader wrote, It isn't easy to please a Merseysider. And yet, one thing which is satisfying their taste is the Beatles' forthcoming January release, Please Please Me. This unmistakable R&B flavoured number, caused great excitement whenever the Beatles played it to their Liverpool audiences. I wonder if the nation's reaction will be as enthusiastic, as that of the Merseyside public when the record is issued. Record Mirror published a review of the single. The magazine wrote, From the oh-so-successful Beatles, comes this follow-up. It's a high-pitched number with plenty of guts and good tune, vocalising, and some offbeat sounds on the disc. The backing verges on great, while the singing is taken by various members of the team. We reckon it's chart chances. It would probably make it as even as their first disc. It's rather bluesy with a fast tempo. The flip side is a merry little ditty with some more offbeat sounds from the team. It's a pleasant rock piece with some great performances. It's a good flip, making this into a good all-round disc, one worth buying in fact. There just happens to be some sounds on this, that other British groups can't reproduce. That same week, Disc Magazine reported, After a recent recording session, the Beatles could not contain their high spirits and they jaunted off to an exclusive London restaurant. The numerous humorous remarks coming from the Beatles' table, could be heard by the whole restaurant. After a while, a bespectacled young man approached them and asked, My fiancé wants to know if you're really the Tornadoes. Please Please Me was the first Beatles single to reach number one on the new Musical Express and Melody Maker charts. It marked the beginning of Beatlemania in Britain. And as they say, the rest is history.